Uh, now we will proceed to the last talk of this block. Uh, that will be, uh, well, the speaker will be Sergey Volkov. Uh, yes, hello, everyone. I try hello. to share my screen. Uh, so okay. can you see it? Yes, now, now we can see it. Uh, you have 15 minutes to, to present your work, followed by uh, five minutes of questions from the audience. Oh, okay, thank you. Whenever you're ready, uh, you can start. Uh, yes, uh, so hello, dear colleagues. Uh, my name is Sergei Volkov, uh, and the topic of my report, uh, training uh, multilingual and uh, adversarial attack robust models uh, for hate detection in social media. Uh, so let's start from typicality and purposes of our research. Uh, nowadays, uh, social media is the most significant uh, information source uh, and uh, the most impo important communication tool on the internet. And uh, information uh, in uh, this uh, is in social media can be aimed at discriminating against some group of people and such intolerance uh, can provoke uh, uh, terrorist acts and uh, even wars. So, and uh, creating and studying methods uh, for hate speech detection in social media is necessary to maintain public safety. Uh, uh, the current uh, approach to hate speech detection can be con considered uh, as uh, similar to sentiment analysis methods. Uh, globally, they can be divided into two groups. Uh, uh, first group is lexicon-based approaches, and the second is machine learning approaches. Uh, Lexicon-based uh, methods uh, analyze some text features, for example, uh, terms uh, presence and uh, frequency or uh, parts of speech analyzing uh, or extracting opinion words and phrases that commonly used to express opinions, for example, good, bad, like, or hate, and so on. Uh, but in our research, we decided to use machine learning me method, uh, namely uh, neural networks. Uh, we applied a huge uh, multilingual model to solve the task of hate speech detection in different la languages. Uh, uh, yes, if uh, we are talking about uh, machine learning, uh, there are large num there is a large number of ways uh, to cheat models uh, that we used. Uh, and the term of the term uh, adversarial attack is used to describe the process of influencing a model which can lead to incorrect operation uh, of this model. Uh, so we decided to find out how such attacks uh, can affect uh, the results uh, of hate speech detection. Uh, in our research, uh, we used uh, a few different uh, data sets. Uh, two data sets was used for fine-tuning, training model, uh, and uh, uh, for training the model, we, use, uh, we used uh, Russian train dat data set, uh, which consists of social network comments uh, that are classified as toxic or natural, uh, and uh, Hindi train data set, uh, which also consists of social network comments, uh, that are classified as toxic or natural. And for testing the model, uh, we used uh, two gold uh, that sets uh, with uh, uh, religious texts. Uh, for example, for in Russian language, it uh, uh, is uh, data with religious text with uh, three uh, hated la labels that were merged in one. Uh, 
uh, religious hatred, uh, ideological hatred, and uh, actual um, texts were merged. Uh, and uh, the second uh, goal that set in English uh, with religious texts. Uh, it uh, has the same labels, neutral or hate. Uh, so this slide shows the distribution by classes for rigid set. Uh, this is uh, not a large amount of data, um, but uh, we uh, use an already pretained model, and this data this data was used for fine tuning and testing model. Uh, uh, texts uh, of uh, each data set were pre-processed uh, before starting the experiments. Uh, since many texts are comments from social networks, so the following steps were done. Uh, first of all, removing emojis, uh, removing uh, hints, uh, hits in tweets, uh, removing hashtags, uh, replacing numbers with uh, the mask and also replacing uh, locations and uh, uh, person uh, and uh, removing links uh, so the model uh, we decided to use is uh, xlmr model uh, a few words about this model uh, XLMR uh, is based on Facebook's Roberto model released uh, in uh, 2019, uh, and uh, it is a large multilingual model uh, trained on huge uh, di data and in 100 languages. Uh, and the model is capable of analyzing text no longer than uh, 50, 500 and 20 tokens so and uh, uh, this model can be fine tuned just uh, in one language and zero shot uh, transfer to other languages uh, how we implement text attack algorithm uh, adversarial attack algorithm was implemented to russian train data set and uh, uh, both uh, test data sets. So uh, this uh, algorithm changed some words in sentences from the data set to uh, synonyms uh, using word embedding model. Uh, then uh, universal sentence embeddings are used to evaluate sentence similarities. If uh, our generated sentence uh, are quite similar to original, then we append it to attack a data set. So uh, the modified word uh, is uh, converted to the same form as the original word. Uh, and we consider it uh, three parts of speech, uh, uh, verbs, nouns, and adjectives. Uh, uh, what about model fit pipeline? Uh, in uh, our study, we considered uh, three approaches to training models. Uh, first uh, is uh, getting baseline model. Uh, uh, it is first step. Uh, we trained uh, our XML, uh, XLMR model on mixed Russian and Hindi training data, and then testing uh, it uh, first uh, of all on Russian data set and uh, attacked Russian data set. Uh, and then um, zero shot test uh, testing in on English data. Uh, uh, so the second version of was the model is uh, XLMR advanced model. Uh, uh, it was additionally trained on attack Russian training that data, uh, and the third one uh, is uh, ansible of models uh, uh, 
we decided to train this Ansible because uh, some uh, autom automatically generated samples uh, from our algorithm can be incorrect and to uh, minimize uh, this uh, effect of noise some errors we fine-tuned an ensemble of models uh, on rush attack that set uh, using bootstrap uh, met methods uh, and the ensemble of models was also tested on all four test data sets. Uh, the result of the ensemble prediction is calculated as the maximum argument from the sum of the outputs of all models. Uh, so some classification resu results uh, are presented in this slide. Uh, first of all, um, uh, the, the base uh, XLMR model uh, shows uh, good uh, results for all test samples except uh, Russian test uh, adversarial data set. Uh, it is at attack that set. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so it, to fix it, uh, we decided to fine-tune the model with the same training texts in Russian uh, that we attacked um, by replacing uh, valuable words with syn synonyms. And thus, we got, we got uh, the advanced model, and we can see that uh, uh, score increased. Uh, and uh, the next slide presents the same the same results, but in table view. Uh, and you can see that uh, oh, also uh, algorithms uh, for replacing words with uh, synonyms for English and Russian are slightly different from each other. Um, however, uh, we can see that after fine tuning on attack that set on Russian attack that set, uh, the accuracy on English uh, data on English examples also slightly increase. Yes. Uh, well, this and this. Uh, parameters. Uh, okay, and uh, conclusion. Uh, in study, in this study, we have implemented and tested several simple training techniques uh, to make cross-lingual hater detection model uh, robust to adversarial attacks. Uh, the experiments show that using a training data will uh, with adversarial attack samples in one language also improves the quality of classification similar cases in zero shot language uh, in English in this case. Uh, and uh, using randomized sensibles of deep models allows, allows you to slightly reduce the test year. Uh, so that's all. Thanks for attention. Uh, any questions, please? Um, okay, so uh, now we will proceed with uh, questions from the audience. So if anyone has any question, please raise your hand. And I will assign you a, a turn. <laughs> okay, we have one question here. Uh, have you tried to, to, instead of having a multilingual data set just like you did, uh, to translate all the data sets uh, using something like a Google Translator or, or something like that and have a, a very big uh, uh, data set having all kinds of uh, uh, samples and, and just to see what happens if you have a better result or not? 
uh, it means uh, translate one data set to other language and test on this result? Yeah. Oh, no, we didn't try. Maybe it's something to try uh, because having a, a bigger data set, then you can have better ways of, of trying to, to figure out, uh, uh, to discover that these uh, uh, hate uh, speech. Mm, maybe yes, uh, but uh, we uh, here we used the same uh, thematically the same uh, texts in uh, train or in test uh, data. So uh, maybe if we translate Russian text to English, for example. Uh, results can be the same but we can try it in future because i noticed that the, the, the sizes of the data sets are different for example this, the size of, of hindi uh, is, is uh, very bigger than the, the size of the english uh, data set for example 10 times uh, the number of samples mm -hmm. so is, uh, if you just have a very big data set with everything, maybe, maybe you can have a better result. Just, just a guess. Yes, okay, thank you. No, that's why we used uh, Hindi data set as train and uh, data sets with uh, that doesn't have a lot of data, only for tests. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question, if I may. Um, uh, here in Mexico, we had a couple of years ago an issue with Facebook where people were getting banned uh, because they were selling black toner for printers and uh, Facebook would detect the word black as hate speech. So uh, the question is, do you uh, take into consideration the context of the words you're detecting as hate samples? Hmm. Uh, I think this model uh, uh, doesn't analyze uh, some words, uh, but an analyzes uh, a sentence or part of text uh, And uh, in other uh, in other approaches like uh, like dictionary based, for example, this uh, method can be applied. But for neural networks, I think uh, if we have a positive example and text uh, consists of huge number of words like black, maybe this model will be work uh, this way, I think. But in other ways, no. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if there are any other questions from the audience. Okay, um, well, uh, then thank you very much uh, for your presentation.